Hey everyone, it's Chloe. Welcome back to my channel. Today is the first day of a very long next couple of days because I'm going to be driving cross country from Ithaca, New York, all the way to San Diego, California, which is about 2,700 plus miles. Now, the whole reason I'm driving cross country is because I'm currently a student at Cornell and because of the whole pandemic that's been going on, obviously school on campus has been canceled. And that sucks because I'm a senior and it's going to be the last time I'm on campus as a student. But I'm sure everyone else is having a really hard time right now too. So the best we can all do is adapt to the situation and be positive about it. Also, I'm not doing this whole cross-country trip alone because I think that would be a little bit insane. So my dad's coming with me. Right now, my dad's in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania at my grandma's house, which is about four hours away from here. So that's going to be my first stop. I'm going to pick him up there. And then from there, we'll decide uh, what route we want to take all the way to San Diego. So as you can see, the back of my truck is very, very full of all my stuff from the last four years. And I also put the seats down in the back so that I could make room for stuff that I actually wanted to keep in the truck. Honestly, having a Tacoma for my particular situation, moving all my stuff from college and doing a cross country trip was the greatest thing ever because even though I only have the five foot bed, I was able to fit everything really, really easily. And I know the Tacoma is really reliable. I feel very confident having it on this road trip. First stop is Elmira because the gas is super cheap. Three hours later. Okay, so I made it to Harrisburg, and the most frustrating thing is that I didn't hit 7777. I hit 7776. At least I made it. I got a lot of bugs on the way, but other than that, not too bad of a drive. The next morning. So it's day number two, we made it to Harrisburg. My dad and I are basically playing Tetris, trying to fit everything in the back of the truck because we picked up some more supplies, like toilet paper and all that stuff. So we're trying to see if we can fit everything in. We put the seats back up because I think we can more efficiently fit everything, but we'll see how it goes. Cause we still have to fit my dad's luggage in that he brought from home for the road trip. So I'm looking for little pockets and stuff that I can just throw all my clothes in. Do you have anything else small that I can like fit in the back here? So we just left Mechanicsburg and we're on the 81 South, right? Yeah. yeah. And the GPS says the next exit is in 2,701 miles, which I don't know if that's right, but that sounds crazy. Okay, Dad, what is Mechanicsburg known for? My understanding of Mechanicsburg is that it was started by a group of people that fixed Conestoga wagons going out west, and now they probably just fix trucks going out west. Hence why there are a ton of trucks on the road, probably delivering everyone their toilet paper and everything. My entire journey has been from here to here. The route we decided to take this morning was the southern route. So we're going to kind of go like this and hit San Diego all the way down there. Now, another option was to take the northern route, which passes through Chicago first and then cuts down. And I think it's a lot more scenic and I really wanted to go through Colorado and Utah and everything, especially having the truck there. I think it'd be really fun. But the problem is, it's a slightly longer route and there's a lot of tolls too. The third option was taking the central route which just cuts diagonally straight from New York to San Diego. But the problem with that is it's a pretty boring drive because there's just like a lot of farms and stuff. So we thought the southern route was the best compromise because while it might be slightly boring, there won't be tolls. I think it'll be safer because of the weather. Okay, so dad, after driving about an hour and a half-ish in the Tacoma, which is probably the most you've driven in this truck. How does it feel? 
yeah, you know, I thought it wouldn't drive that well on the highway, it being a uh, truck with big tires, but surprisingly on the highway where you don't have to make too many turns, it's perfectly fine, it tracks well, and you don't have to keep getting it uh, you know, back on center. It doesn't wobble too much because we're not making uh, quick turns or anything like that, so it's, it's perfectly fine. Yeah, we tried using ECT power for a little bit. Uh, my dad said he doesn't feel a difference, but I've used it before and I feel a difference. So we're keeping it off right now just to save gas. What's your daily driver normally? It's a Lexus RX 300. And is that a lot smoother than this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, the only cars that I've ever driven is a 1999 Dodge Durango and this truck. So I'm pretty used to driving heavy, rough vehicles. So we've made our first stop. We are in Virginia right now. We're at a Shell gas station, not to get gas yet because I think we have about three quarters of a tank left. We're just here to get coffee and use the restroom and stuff. Flu symptoms and please, most people, the vast majority of Americans are gonna be better within a week. Certainly within two weeks of getting over the illness, they're gonna be back to normal. Much shorter than six weeks. One hour later. Stopped real quick to get Starbucks and as you can see, I'm in the driver's seat, so we're switching off. We're gonna get gas because we're about at a half tank right now. And then I'm gonna drive for, I guess, how long I feel. Third time stopping for gas. We're currently at a half tank. With all the stuff in the back, our fuel economy is only 18, but that's not too bad for a truck. TRD Rock Warrior. Okay, so we're a little bit past Lexington, Virginia, not Lexington, Kentucky. It's about 3.10 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, yep. and it is raining outside. How long have I been driving? Maybe about an hour. Right now we're in Sheets at Bristol, and we had about a quarter tank left. I think this is our fourth fill up. Inventory, and by the way, when you purchase that gun, you get a free day at the range. Now, where's the range? Right next door. Climate control, indoor range. You can shoot any time of the year there. Barnett guns for all of your shooting needs. Right now, it's 4:43 a.m. We're getting gas. I don't know what number of time this is, but we just hit Arkansas. Um, I fell asleep basically at midnight and my dad kept driving through, but I think we're both getting tired. So we're gonna make our first stop at a hotel, even though it's the morning. Two hours later. Okay, so I think in the last clip, I said we were gonna stop at a hotel right now. It's, what's the local time? We're in Arkansas in Little Rock. 6.46. It's 6.46 a.m. And I think what we're gonna do instead is we're going to try to make it to Albuquerque because I wanna stop there and see all the Breaking Bad stuff. And that's about 12, 13 hours away. Um, and then we're gonna spend the night there. But while I'm driving, because my dad's been driving um, most of the time while I got to sleep all through last night in the truck, um, I'm gonna drive so that we'll have time to switch off. Oh, I was gonna talk about the lady. Also, I stopped at this gas station in Little Rock I don't know what it is, but I was really afraid because like the second I walked in the store to use the bathroom, the lady at the counter said, well, don't we have a visitor coming through here? And then while I was in the bathroom, I could hear them talking about me. So that's okay. <laughs> so last night we stopped in, what was the town called, Mr. Ken? Dandridge. Dandridge, Tennessee. And we stopped to see my third grade teacher, which is really cool. So I'll insert those clips in right now. Hello, Ollie. Hi, Ollie. Here's, Chloe, here's my new uh, dining room table. Where's Bowie? So Hi. fun. So that's, that's a good deal. Oh, that's very good. Yeah, so if you're two years from now, it'll be better. Because, yeah. 
Look how clean this is. I mean, I know it's hard, but it's not. See, as soon as I got this, I spent about like 40 hours cleaning up everything underneath. Yeah. I cleaned it before. This is you here, right? You didn't have this before in California. No. And this my garage in California was 20 by 19. Yeah. Here, she recognized it. Dad just asked me if in a couple years we could give this pickup to my brother James, my younger brother, and then I could get a new Tacoma. And I think he was kind of surprised by my response because I told him that I don't want to give this one away and specifically this one away because it has sentimental value. I don't know, like I like new things and I think if it were 2020 and I didn't have a Tacoma, I'd get a 2020 Tacoma instead of this 2019. But there's just something about, I brought this truck to college. It was the first truck that I had. And weren't you the same way with your Trans Am, kind of? Yeah, although I, I fell out of love with it because it was mechanically very bad. Hopefully. Think, very badly constructed. Not not well constructed for that way. Yeah, well hopefully nice. my own kids can drive this Tacoma because I think that'd be pretty cool. But maybe I'll buy another Tacoma, but I, I don't ever really want to get rid of this. I don't know if any of you guys are like that with your first vehicles or any of your vehicles currently. Who knows? Maybe my mind will change because I'm only 21 right now and when they make huge improvements, maybe. But as of right now, this is very high sentimental value and so I don't want to give it to my brother. I'll let him drive it, but that's about it. <laughs> Does he want a Tacoma? I think so. He likes this one. Yeah, he likes this one a lot. Yeah, he does. Yeah, when this was in... Cool. Yeah, when it was in San Diego before, or we got it shipped to Ithaca, he would want to go ride in the back of it. Not the back, the tail, but the back seat. Just up the street and back, because he thought it was the most fun thing. So, I think he was a little bit sad when it went back to school, but he's excited now that we're driving it back home. Right now we're in the middle of Oklahoma. We just hit over 9,000 miles on this truck. And this time we ran the gas pretty low um, and we're getting an average fuel economy. I think every gas fill up of around 18, probably because my stuff weighs so much. Uh, can I get one impossible whopper and one regular whopper? All right, it'll be 657, thank you. We've literally only stopped twice for food. This is our second time stopping for food. We haven't really officially stopped for sleep. We've been just taking turns driving, even though it's our second day. I'm at Chick-fil-A right now. Uh, just got a chicken sandwich. My dad just went to Burger King and got a Whopper and the Impossible Whopper. And he's trying to see which one is better because he's never tried the Impossible Whopper. I have no idea because I've never tried either. But also I'm super picky about eating in my truck, no one's allowed to eat. I'm letting it happen as long as we have this California blanket over us. Also, another super sad thing was we just got an email from Cornell, uh, cause I'm a senior saying that our commencement got postponed to an unknown date, but not surprising, but just sad. I like this better than Popeyes. What's the verdict on the Impossible Burger? Yeah, you can't tell, tell the difference between that and the regular Whopper. Nice. The first time I drove cross country, I drove from Detroit all the way to uh, Denver, Colorado, with only stopping for gas. And then I thought, because it was January, and there was snow on the ground, that I shouldn't try to cross through Colorado in the dark and so I decided to take a nap so I went and I found a 7-Eleven and I just parked in front of that and just took a nap for like 45 minutes and when I woke up there was this huge like you know pickup truck with all this industrial equipment and these guys in these orange overalls. It was the oil Halliburton, rig guys right? Halliburton on the back of it and I was, I was so surreal like these guys are like doing some maintenance work on some oil rig or something in the middle of the night, you know, their big, big pickup truck. And I uh, just always remember that.
get infected to go home and give it to their grandparents. That's all we're asking. So we just crossed the border from Texas into New Mexico. The drive through Texas wasn't too long. I think it was about two, three hours because we just drove through the top part. It's very bright out, which is why I put my sunglasses on. It's very difficult to see even with the sunglasses on. And right now we're following a red Tacoma. We definitely decided that we're going to stay in Albuquerque for the night. We got a hotel there. I'm really excited because we're going to see all the Breaking Bad sites tomorrow morning. So far this drive has been pretty boring. We're just staying on the 40 West. It's literally been a straight shot. Most of our day was spent driving through Oklahoma and then Texas and I guess the next three hours are going to be driving through New Mexico. This is a very different drive compared to yesterday which was through Tennessee because we hit a rainstorm. Is that what we hit? Thunderstorm. Thunderstorm. I was asleep when that happened, but my dad just told me I had to pull over for it uh, for about 10 or 15 minutes or so because it was that bad. But today the drive has been beautiful. So right now we have about 50 more miles till we get to Albuquerque and we have hit snow slash rain slash sleep. Did not expect it to snow. Mexico of all places. Oh, what happens to the charger? I don't know. It's ready for snow. We wanted to get out and see the snow. Well, I thought this was the last time this truck would see snow, at least this year. And I never expected it to be in New Mexico. The next morning. So right now it is Saturday, March 21st. We spent the night in Albuquerque, New Mexico, obviously in a hotel because we've been driving since I think Thursday morning at around like 10, 10.30 a.m. all the way till last night, Friday at 8 p.m., which is insane. And I was thinking about how last night, it's crazy that our very first stop to sleep since coming from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania was all the way in New Mexico. But the thing is, this cross country trip isn't really a vacation, you know? It's the whole, I need to get out of school right now and go home because the whole country is in a pandemic and the whole world's in a pandemic right now. So yes, while I think that it's very insane that we didn't stop to sleep um, until New Mexico, you know, the main goal was to get home and drive as far as possible and as quickly as possible in the safest way, of course, uh, to get back to San Diego. Now, of course, when you go cross country, you know, you want to see the sights and see all these cool things. And so that's why I think we're going to still do the Breaking Bad stuff, but I think we're going to do it really quickly because we still have another 11 hours till we get back to San Diego. So we'll probably just um, drive by the sights and not get out just so we have enough time to get back home. Phoenix, Arizona. We just got gas. I think it was 232, which wasn't the greatest, but we've been getting about 325 miles per fill up. Also, I'm going to be driving to Phoenix and then from there, depending on how tired I am or how I feel or how my dad feels, we'll switch off again if necessary. In Arizona, up in the mountains, I guess. Beautiful 
here. driving an average fuel economy of 19.6 so I'm pretty happy. Right now we're in Phoenix. Gas prices are a little bit more expensive than they've been before but that's okay. I think we have about four hours, four and a half hours left to go so that's pretty exciting. Thank you.